listening to the Departure Lounge podcast with your hosts, Tom Whittle and Jer Dooley. Your ticket to the home of aviation podcasts. It's Sunday night and you know what that means. A very good evening everybody to what is episode 14 of the Departure Lounge podcast here on the Departure Lounge YouTube channel. My name as ever is, uh, is Tom Whittle and joining me this evening, or should I say rejoining us this evening, is my wonderful co-host Jer Dooley. Jer, welcome to episode 14. Episode 14, Tom, and you know something? It's an absolute pleasure to be back, my good friend. I know I was only gone for, God for one, one, but look, uh, as they say, the king is now back in the house, so let's, let's rock and roll on this uh, wonderful episode. 14 is to woo, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. And, of course, joining us as per normal uh, in the uh, deepest, darkest basement of the comments section is uh, Ian Hartley. Ian, welcome to episode 14. Yeah, welcome to you as well, Tom. I'm to you, Jay. Um, I you Thanks, find you both well tonight. Doing well. Yeah, and, uh, yes. Doing all right. Yeah, thanks for letting oh, me boy. join you again. <laughs> well, who else is going to read the comments <laughs> out? Um <laughs> But no, it's, it's absolutely fine. So uh, we'll get into some housekeeping first before we uh, get into the main um, main uh, sort of bulk of the show. Uh, so uh, as you can see on the top of the screen and also they'll be in the description of this uh, podcast uh, are the social medias that you need uh, for uh, subscribing or following the channel. Um, you can do that um, by... Yeah, either searching or, like I say, in the uh, description below, uh, clicking on those links. Um, secondly, a nudge in the direction of the podcast's sponsor, sorry, not podcast, the actual channel, uh, the channel sponsor, airspots.com, who uh, just today have um, sort of done a, a clearance sale uh, update for their page, so uh, aircraft models for a very cheap price. Um, so definitely recommend checking them out um, for, for that one. And of course, as always, uh, if you wish at some point in the future to become a guest on the show, just like our guest this evening, um, drop us a message on either Instagram or Twitter um, and we will get you on. We're now taking bookings for uh, August. Um, August is slowly booking itself up. So if you want to come on, uh, drop us a message and we will get you on uh, as soon as we can. Um, apart from that, that is pretty much everything for uh for this evening um what i will say and this is not one for um this is sort of slightly off topic but we'll go into it um more for you ian uh england germany on tuesday is it coming home um well if you live in frankfurt probably we'll leave it at that um <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> we'll I'd, I'd like to think so tom i really really would but you know we'll see what happens let's hope so Think positive. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, uh, exactly. So with um, with that, uh, let's jump into uh, the news. This week in aviation. So our first topic for this evening is the news that broke uh, towards the back end of last week, which is Lufthansa who are reactivating uh, five of their Airbus A340-600s with uh, first class. Uh, these will be based yes. at Munich, um, and they will be jetting off to the likes of North America and, I believe, um, I believe Asia as well, just purely because of the uh, demand. And... Um, this is a good. This is a good sign. Good sign for the A two thousand four hundred, which everyone I think thought that it was it was a dying breed and you know going to be incredibly rare and you wouldn't be able to see it again. But um, yeah, it's, uh, back and Tom, it's fantastic news. Ed, do you know some Tom? When 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 I heard the news break um, yesterday, I was absolutely delighted. So I was because now the thing is now the thing is next year all, all going well. I can focus on trying to get to Munich to witness these uh, fine beasts because I tell you, you know some I thought I thought that the A three forty was uh, was a thing of the well the six hundred was a thing of the past was uh, a big thumbs up to to look hands and of course good news as well uh, according to what I hear uh, some of the newer um, newer models of the seven four seven 
uh, 400s are uh, meant to be coming back as well, I, I, I heard. So so it's something to look forward to, look forward to because, cause like, um, Munich, Munich is one of these kind of airports that you always love going to and you love to see see all the big, big, big heavy, heavy stuff uh, going in and out as well. So, yeah, a big, a big welcome back to the A34600 uh, of uh, loved hands. I can't. Can't wait to witness those uh, those four amazing uh, Rolls Royce uh, Trent uh, uh, five hundred engines uh, uh, on on that aircraft. I I've always been a, a fond lover of the three forty, so it'll be it'll be great boost to see it. What do you think yourself? I think it's it, it, like I said, it's it's fantastic news. Um, yeah, it's fantastic news uh, that um, that they're bringing them back. Like I said, because it's <clears throat> purely. Um, purely down to uh, like the the demand like i said and the fact that they're based out of munich which is a, a big sort of plus as well for them um so, yeah yeah so it's it's going to i don't know how long they're going to be around for i think it's just for the summer i think and then they'll go actually to- tom believe believe it or not uh, i heard i heard i think it's I think it's up to uh, 2023, if I'm correct, because I think it's because there's a, there's a hold up on uh, on Airbus A350 releases or something uh, uh, to the airline. So, and uh, is is it correct that I'm here that it's going to be uh, is it going to be all uh, is it all going to be business or is it going to be uh, economy? Or what's the story? I, I thought I heard something something. Maybe now I could be incorrect. You might be able to correct uh, me and Ian on this. Uh, I think it's more sort of um, just. Yeah. I think it's more sort of that they're bringing them back because of the the, the whole first class option. Um, like right. The, oh, that's it. Yeah. Big, I think, like you said, they're they're going to probably be around till about twenty twenty three, um, and that's because that's why I'm uh, hearing you, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You've got the <clears throat> excuse me the late deliveries of the um, the the Airbus A three fifties that will come with the first class product. So. I think what they're doing is just filling in a stopgap for now to uh, to sort of fill the time up in before they they end up taking the deliveries there. Yeah, and Tom, can I just ask one <clears throat> final question? Uh, is there talks that Lufthansa are also meant to be getting seven eight seven Dreamliners? That's another topic that's been uh, been on my head as well uh, over the last uh, couple. The days I've been, I even, I even had a dream actually that uh, uh, Lufthansa are meant to be actually flying uh, uh, seven eight seven Dreamliners. Now, whether it's the eight hundred or the nine hundred, I'd say be the, or it could be possibly the ten because you, you know, Lufthansa love, uh, love big, big uh, uh, aircraft. So I reckon it could be the nine or the ten and possibly go for it. Well, very quickly before we move on to the for the next one because we'll we'll. We'll crack on yeah. the show shortly. Um, I believe it's the seven eight seven dash nines that they've got. Is it? Um, and I believe right. the order is for double figures. I think. I don't know how many they right. have okay. ordered, but I believe it's the uh, the dash nine uh, Dreamliner that they they've ordered. But when they'll get those, probably won't be for another sort of couple of years at least. Co- couple of years anyway. Yeah. Uh, Ian, before we before Tom cracks on with the next part, what do you think of this news yourself, uh, Ian? Oh, with the. Um... With the A three forties, I mean, yeah, they're, they're they're a fantastic plane, aren't they? I mean, everybody, everyone loves a an A three forty with its four engines and what have you. But I just, okay. yeah, I, I just, I just don't quite get why they would bring such an old. If if airlines are financially struggling a little bit, I, I mean, would it not make more economic sense to fly a seven eight seven nine hundred? I don't know, I don't know, or even yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know, even seven four sevens. I mean. What's going to be more thirsty, an old 340 or an old 747? I'm not sure. So, mm. Obviously, they know what they're doing, don't they? They know more than I do. So. They do. They do. Well, as regards, as regards to the 747, well, they can't, they can't really do away with the Queen of the Skies. The Queen of the Skies has to, has to keep uh, spreading those wings for, for at least another couple of years anyway, at least. And, and the, 800s, the 800s are definitely going to spread their wings for uh, quite, uh, quite some time anyway. But so look, anyway, we'll... Uh, We'll roll on anyway uh, with the next uh, part anyway. Yes, we will. Yes, so uh, moving on from that news topic is getting on to the other uh, piece of news that came uh, this week with uh, Icelandic startup Play uh, finally getting off the ground and uh, serving their first flight, uh, which went over to uh, Stansted Airport. Um, now the flight from uh, right, uh, Keflavik Airport uh, took two and a half hours to get to Stansted. Um, wow! And um, yeah, 
it was uh, done with a, uh, a brand new and freshly painted in probably the most eye-catching livery I think that, that there is out there at the moment uh, A321 Neo um, so yeah those that were on board um, I would think we mentioned this uh, maybe an episode or two ago that the airline itself offered out about a thousand free tickets including for the route to London um, so there's no but, doubt a lot oh, of people that's would have, good. Uh, yeah would have um, sort of taken that uh, taken up and, and probably used it for for this particular flight in, in particular. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the CEO uh, Berger Johnson uh, said this will probably be the biggest moment in place history for a while, as the inaugural flight is a big deal by itself, but also because today Play also launched its official IPO only an hour later. Usually the inaugural flight is packed with invitations, but today only customers were aboard, as the staff of Play has still lots of work to do. So. It's for me. I see play as like a replacement for WoW. Um, but yeah, the, the I business... think yeah, I think actually, Tom, you're right. It yeah. is actually because because uh, I heard I heard uh, I heard when they were actually uh, launching it was actually to replace uh, WoW. Do you know something, Tom? That I still think of uh, uh, WoW today. That special, special, lovely, iconic, uh, uh, pinkish, purple uh, livery. That, that 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 was just. So awesome, uh, like to see it coming in, especially if the sunlight was actually directly on the side of the aircraft when it'd be coming in. You just see see it really showing up. But I have to say now, I absolutely love uh, love the livery of this A three twenty one Neo now in the in the picture. I think it takes I think it really actually sets it off absolutely amazing. And I, do you know something? I'd love to see. I'd love to see him doing a doing a flight between uh, between uh, Dublin and uh, Reykjavik. I think that'd be be absolutely amazing. I did see somebody tweet that earlier, um, asking them if they were, if they were going to start up doing Dublin routes, and they they said, you know, never rule it out. So um, nice, yeah, it's a very good opportunity, a very good chance that they probably will do. Um, but yeah, in terms of launching routes, um, so. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday coming, as you as you see the video uh, or the stream, um, June 29th, yeah. uh, they will launch um, a service to uh, Tenerife, um, and then in July they'll um, start operating to Alicante, Barcelona, Berlin, Copenhagen, and Paris, and that is after they've taken delivery of two more A321 Neos in the coming weeks. Awesome! Oh, that's fantastic news. Do, uh, and do you know some? Do you know some? I want to say. Uh, I, I wish. I wish this new. Uh, this new venture. Uh, uh, the best of luck, and hopefully, hopefully, it goes. Uh, goes as well. Well for them, and uh, that they that they start planning many more uh, interesting routes, and hopefully they'll do. They'll, they'll go a lot farther than uh, uh, wash a uh, port. Uh, wow! Did I say? Uh, um, uh, I I still to this day, though, as I said, I still miss uh, miss Wow. But look, this is this is a new venture, so we'll uh, we'll we'll take we'll take, we'll take this uh, flying it's all right. Mm. We will indeed. And the last one, uh, yeah. last news bit for this week. <clears throat> uh, news bit for this week. Um, Qatar, um, Qatar Airways have revealed their brand new seven eight seven dash nine business class suite. Uh, as you can see uh, on the screen in front of you, um, so that what they've done is they've kept it a, like a very close, closely guarded secret, um, following the, the, the delivery of the first Dreamliner uh, Dash Nine over a year ago, um, and now pictures have been released of the uh, one-to-one configuration of the new business suite. Um, I really like this. I really, really like this. I saw a picture of it earlier. So do I. And it was. It looks like you know, get me a ticket. Um, onto Qatar, sort of like right now, just because it just looks amazing. Wow, that do you know something, Tom? Do you not know really, do you not know really set, sets off the interior of uh, uh, Qatar? Is the is the purple uh, lighting lighting scheme along the along the the ceiling of the aircraft, and uh, and then the way they have all the all the the TV monitors and all uh, uh, situated. That is, that you know something you you don't realize on, until you see the inside of a of a Dreamliner cabin how well it looks. But I believe um, the A three fifty cabin is absolutely uh, uh, laid out uh, prefer- perfect as well. I, I I believe also as well. I believe so. I believe so. The um, yeah, it'll be the the first flight. Um, 
for the new business class because the seven eight seven dash nines have been operating cargo. Um, it'll operate That's um, right. the first passenger flight for over a year uh, for the for the uh, Dreamliner dash nine, um, and that will debut on flight one twenty seven from Doha to Milan Malpensa. So uh, wow, that's on that tomorrow. Going to get a um, a really nice sort of surprise. So. Oh, it'll be, do you know something, Tom? It'll be, it'll be a surprise in a million, so it will, because I tell you, I, as you said, you, 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 you actually like to lay out this, I, I surely, I surely like to lay out, but I'd love, you know something, I'd love to be one of many passengers, actually, to, to, to be going aboard that particular aircraft. It looks, mm. looks so well, and uh, as I said, the, the TV monitors, the way they're all done, done all in a rope along the, along the cabin, it just looks uh, uh, unbelievable. It is nice. It is nice. Um, so yeah. yeah, so that wraps up the news uh, for this week. Um, we've got just one comment in the chat, so Ian, we'll let you jump in. Yep, it's from Pillow Pilot. He just says, uh, "Hey, Jay, glad you're back. I don't think you was um, with us, Jay. It was Alex last week, weren't it, Tom? It certainly was. Yeah, Pillow Pilot was. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You missed that one last week, uh, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, t- well, thanks. Well, thanks anyway, Pillow Pilot. It's good. It's great. It's great to be back, and anyone else, uh, anyone else uh, uh, wants to give me a shout, they're, they're, they're more than welcome to. And and uh, Ian, Ian will read out the, the comments anyway. That uh, that's uh, coming anyway. Uh, me and Tom will let Ian, Ian, Ian do that part of the segment, as I say. Yeah, well, I've got a couple more I can do while I'm here. Uh, yeah, Jeremy Carlisle is um, giving a wave to everybody, so good evening to Jeremy. Good evening, Jeremy. Uh, Steve Plains. Oh, thanks, Jeremy. I'm oh, sorry. Um, Steve Plains is uh, evening goal. Uh, just going back to Bournemouth. It's, it's the place to see the A340s. Uh, two a day. We have and arrive X Virgin and one X Etihad. I didn't know they had an X Etihad one as well. That must be. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. One, I think the all white one they've got there. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd I've seen the X Virgin one. And yeah, yeah. I'd name the registration, but I don't want to really be much of a geek this evening. All oh, right, fair hey. enough. And just going back Guys. as well to the Qatar oh, thing. Yeah, as, sorry, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, uh, when you were talking about the A340s, it took me back to um, a few years ago when Qatar they, um, signed a big, um, it, it was a typhoon deal with British Aerospace up here, and uh, they actually flew in on a, it was an A340-200, I think, Tom, weren't That's it? correct, yes. Which was uh, an absolute fantastic sight to see a Qatar A340-200 going into Wharton. So, yeah, that was a nice thing wow. to see. Yeah, that was lovely. Yeah, I've never seen one Hey, thing. guys, can I just say one thing now before we, 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 we move along? Um, did, any, did any of you see the, the, the absolutely gorgeous A340 uh, that actually uh, went into London Heathrow uh, during the week? Uh, it was uh, the, 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 the Libyan uh, A340 that with, with all the beautiful colours on it. How she, did you not uh, see it? She it looked... was all over Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> couldn't miss it, could oh, you? <laughs> oh, I tell you, do you know something? What an absolute beauty that was. I would have, I would have loved, I would have loved to mm. actually uh, have caught that one. Out. And there was some, there was some other A340, the Kuwaiti, the Kuwaiti, Kuwaiti government uh, uh, A340 was actually uh, uh, in Heathrow. I think she was due to the the paradox she from Heathrow sometime today. And so I just hope some uh, some uh, good plate spotter was. Actually, down uh, at Heathrow to get her uh, leave it. That, that'd be a lovely one. He was a 200 or so. Yeah. 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 All right, guys. Right, enough, yep. enough for well, that. Yep. Yep. Like I said, that wraps it up. So if you've got any more like comments uh, or anything, get them in the chat. We'll uh, we'll get them read out as the, uh, the evening progresses. But for now, uh, we are going to bring on this week's guest. Oh, yes. This week's special guest. So this week's uh, special guest um, is a former uh, Jet 2 and Virgin Atlantic cabin crew member currently plying her trade at EasyJet as a human factor specialist, which she will be telling us all about. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Jordan Hazrati. Jordan, welcome. Good evening. Thank you so much. Um, it is a pleasure to be here tonight and I'm really, really looking forward to the next hour or so getting to have a good chat about all things aviation. Fantastic. Yeah. Very good evening to you from me as well, Jordan. Thank you very much, Joe. It's a pleasure to meet you. And from everyone else. And you too. <laughs> An absolute pleasure. Fantastic. So if anybody's got any questions for Jordan about, um, well, quite literally anything aviation related, um, get them into the, uh, into the chat and uh, we'll get them uh, read out as like I said as the evening progresses uh, but first uh, as I introduced um, 
uh, in the introduction to yourself. Um, do you want to sort of just introduce yourself a little bit more, just tell people what you're about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so quite rightly, as you said, I am ex-cabin crew. I started my career working for Jet2 based out of Manchester um, before moving to uh, Virgin Atlantic, where I was based out of London Heathrow. Um, I then sadly was affected with the coronavirus um, and then decided I was going to do my master's degree in human factors in aviation, which has led to my position today with EasyJet as a human factors specialist, where I'm very, very happy. And um, I'm also a student pilot currently undergoing my PPL. So it's all busy at the moment and it's all very aviation, but I wouldn't have it any other way. And that pretty much wow. sums up my life. <laughs> very busy. Yeah, wow, very, very that's busy. awesome absolutely awesome very, very yeah good. i literally have got the best of all worlds so i am the most yeah. lucky girl in the world really <laughs> fantastic wow fantastic um so yeah so let, let's uh we'll get the uh get the, the chat on the way then um tell us how you sort of came about getting into sort of the uh the avian put my teeth in aviation industry um is it something <laughs> you've always wanted to do or is it uh, something you just sort of thought why not i'll just give it a go in between actually so it's probably a little bit of a roundabout story um but i have always loved flying and everything aviation and the airlines like i'm probably one of those people who goes on holiday and likes the flight and the spit at the airport more than the actual holiday if that makes any sense because yeah. i was just fascinated from day one like about how aircraft worked the operation and despite this i actually didn't follow it i went um went to perform in art school and trained as a dancer so I went and did that and had a great time working in the industry for a bit, but I literally could not get over the aviation industry. It was just always in the back of my mind about wanting to um, wanting to fly, wanting to be a part of the industry. And it took until I was 21 when I decided, actually, no, this is what I want to do. I should have always done it and decided that I was going to apply for my first role as cabin crew with Jet2 and was incredibly fortunate to land it at my first choice base as well. So it just kind of all fell into place when I sort of committed to it and went, yeah, that's exactly what I want. So a bit of both, really, more than anything. <laughs> Yeah, as I say, in terms of um, in terms of getting into uh, like let's say the cabin crew, that's obviously how you mm -hmm. how you started in the industry. Um, and you, you say you landed sort of um, you know you were lucky to sort of get it. Um, what, mm -hmm. what was like the the process? I mean, there might be people watching here that might sort of fancy the role. So, what what would be the process of sort of applying for that sort of role? Right. So, yeah, um, it will vary airline to airline. They will have slightly different processes wherever you go. But generally, it starts with an application form. Then there's some kind of either telephone or video interview um, where they just ask you like a few competency questions more than anything. And you sort of use your experience and your knowledge to see whether you'd suit the airline and their values and ethos. From there, there would be either like an assessment day and then a one-to-one -one interview as well. And from there, you would find out if you'd been successful or not. Like I say, it varies airline to airline, but um, that's the general rough gist of the airlines I've worked for have been pretty much along the same line. So, yeah, it can be a long process. It can take several months and you, you can sit there and forget almost you've put the application in, to be honest, by the time you get the job. But it's worth holding out for 100%. Hmm. Did it take you by surprise when you got the sort of the, the message back to say that you, you'd been successful? Yeah, it had actually. So I was actually a first year undergrad at the time as well at university. So um, I remember I'd been to the assessment day probably a week before that and thought it had gone fairly well, but it was difficult and there was a lot of candidates going for it. And um, the day was, I was shattered by the end of the day, to be quite honest with you. I went home and got into bed at about half seven. So <laughs> it really did take its toll. Um, but I remember being sat at university and just getting the email about five past nine in the morning. They said, you've been successful at uh, obtaining a training course for your first choice base. So it came as a surprise. I think I went running through the university like, I'm going to be cabin crew. Like, and people were looking at me as if to say, why are you here then? But <laughs> it was it was a really, really amazing day. And it's something I'll never forget, to be quite honest. Fantastic. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll continue with questions, but I'm sure jer has got a few uh, that he'll want to ask you. So I'll hand it to Joe. Thanks, uh, Tom, uh, very much. Uh, so, Jordan, uh, you um, you were with two, you were with two uh, other amazing um, airlines, and one of my airlines, of course, is uh, Virgin Atlantic, which mm -hmm. I, which I, which I, which I loved, loved, uh, always loved, especially, especially when they, when they had the seven four seven and that. Uh, so, um, so, um, what, um, 
What made you? What made you? Made you to uh, to become uh, uh, cabin crew? And uh, uh, how 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 was it when you were working um, with uh, Virgin Atlantic? And um, uh, what particular aircraft uh, were you, were you a part of? Oh God, there's like three questions in one. That um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, one at a time. Jeff. Um, what did what made me become cabin crew? Um, I the, to be honest with you, there's several things, and I always liked the sort of safety element of it. If I'm quite honest, I really enjoyed having that responsibility and the procedural sort of side of the cabin crew. It is it does take a lot of work, and it, there are things that you learn about planes and how the operation works that really fascinated me. Just even down to like procedures on board, like door arming and the safety demo. Like that was really something for me that. I enjoyed and enjoyed knowing that I had a part of people's sort of experience and making sure they were safe on board. Um, but more importantly than that, it was the people. Like, I think people are inherently brilliant. And this works in two ways for me. Like, the crew that you work with are, they make the job. It doesn't matter if you're doing a Geneva or a Jamaica. They, the crew will make your day. And it, it's just the most special atmosphere to work in. And people people within the industry are special i truly truly believe that and i don't know what it is that makes them special but literally you can sit in a briefing room and five minutes later you'll be on the aircraft and you'll start to know their life story by the time you get off you know everything about them but then you might never see them again it, it's the strangest relationship but it is the most incredible thing to do um and the other part of that is of course the passengers and you hear lots of stories about things that happen on board like disruptive passengers or this situation got out of hand but actually that is the minority the majority of flights are just really lovely and being a part of people's journey is something so special and you really can make a difference and that responsibility for me nothing beats it nothing at all and i truly truly think i have had the best of both worlds at both the airlines i work for so awesome. I was just lucky, but I, I say I was lucky. I was in some ways, but it, it has been hard work and a culmination of strategic effort to get to the point that I have. So it's a bit of everything. <laughs> I hate to say it. Um, awesome. What else did you want to know? Was it aircraft? What I operated? Did, was it yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. So when I was at Jet 2, I worked on the 737-8, um, the 800. So that was the main sort of core of the operation. Um, awesome. Great, great aircraft. And then also was very lucky to operate on the 757, which I think is a more rare and rare beast by the year, really, to be honest. Um, awesome. Wow. Who doesn't love the 75? It's beautiful. Well, we all looking. do. I'll second that. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> it's beautiful. I was then pulled off it to go and operate on the air tanker lease on the A330-200. Oh, wicked. So, oh, nice. Yeah, that was nice. really cool. I, and the guys there are amazing. They really are incredible, incredible pilots there. And I loved how it worked. And that was my first sort of wide body experience as well. So I got a bit of a taster for what potentially I was to go on to do with Virgin, although I didn't know I was going to go on to Virgin at the time. So... Um, it was, but I did lo like operating a wide body aircraft. It was special when you checked in for it. You thought, oh, this is quite cool. We've got a really big team today, and you knew you're gonna have a good day. Um, so yeah, then I went to Virgin, and at Virgin, I operated on the seven eight seven dash nine. Um, the I was trained on the A three forty six hundred, the A three fifty, the what else, the A three thirty two hundred and three hundred series again. So. Everything but the 7-4, the Queen of the Skies, unfortunately. Oh. I never got to work on her, but... Um, oh, God. She's still a... She's got a piece of my heart, and she always will, so... You know something uh, that you mentioned, that you mentioned uh, the, the Virgin Atlantic 747 Queen of the Skies? They, they definitely have a place in my heart, because... Uh, yeah. I, I, like, I, when, when I watched... When I watched the final flight of them... Uh, uh, and even Manchester, and uh, I'd seen a couple of them, uh, of course, landing into Heathrow. Uh, mm -hmm. It did, it did, um, it did bring tears to me eyes because you know, the, the, like, like I had the privilege, like, uh, to be at Heathrow uh, a few years ago, and I witnessed uh, many, many of the seven four sevens belong to birds and taken off down down uh, down the runway a few times, and I got a couple of the pilots uh, flickering the lights at me when uh, when. Um, when the when they be lining up on uh, uh, the runway and that you know you, you miss you miss that yeah. kind of thing. But I have to say though that the hear you actually mentioning uh, the A three fifty, which is the 
fifty one thousand uh that Virgin Atlantic has. That must have been that must have been something uh, for you uh, to actually to be a part of that beautiful aircraft. I love yeah. the three fifty I have. It's a beautiful, beautiful aircraft, and I think there's a hashtag that goes around that sort of between us guys. We say it's the beauty queen of the skies because she is yeah. really, really a gorgeous looking aircraft. And yeah, I have to say the product that Virgin have got with it on board is fantastic. Like I really, really do like what they've done with it. It's gorgeous, and to operate on, it's really nice. So I think if there's anyone sort of who does listen who is going to get to go on a A350 flight with Virgin soon, you're in for a treat. It's a beautiful well, thing. Yeah, yeah, and of course uh, the seven eight seven nine hundred. Now, what did what 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 did you think of that one? Do you know what the seven eight seven is my favourite? So I do. I, is this? Yeah, I do have a little wow. bit of a soft spot for it. Um, I think. Oh, it's so so hard. We get this age old debate all the time, don't we, about Boeing versus Airbus and what? Yeah, that. yeah. And to be honest with you, I have loved every single one of the aircraft I've operated on for one reason or another. But with the Dreamliner, it just works. It's very crew friendly. It's very, it's a nice size. The lighting inside is absolutely stunning, and it's it's just really, really. You feel like it's reliable, um, and I. I have to say I've got a special spot for it because it's the first aircraft I operated at Virgin was a Boeing 787 GVD so Lucy in the sky wow. and um I will every time I see her fly over me I live right under the Heathrow approach path and every time I see oh, it, I just um, yeah Did you know, <laughs> you know some Jordan, Jordan I said it, I said it to, to Tom uh, a couple of times that that I would love to have, have the pleasure to to live under the flight path of Heathrow like to, to be getting all these wonderful uh, uh, birds, as I call them, uh, uh, going overhead, especially especially when you hear the the seven eight seven engines uh, when when she's on full power yes. going over. I, yeah. I, I love I love the sound. I love the sound, and of course, not forgetting uh, the A three fifty one thousand when you hear hear her, her engines uh, uh, going. You hear that hear that lovely uh, whining sound uh, that, that that the engines on her the, the next generation engines as they're called or whatever. Yeah, they they really are special, and you know you only have to look up and see an A three fifty wingtip, and you're like, wow, that that's incredible. And it doesn't, it's not that far away. I think I'm something ridiculous, like twenty seven seconds away from touchdown at Heathrow. So it is special, and you see it and think, yeah, uh, that's that's why we do what we do. Like that's why. Oh, that's amazing. Well, look, that that has been been absolutely lovely. Like. Hearing, hearing, hearing all about these wonderful aircraft. So, Tom, I'll, I'll, I'll hand the floor to you, my friend. No problem. We'll just jump back into uh, into the comments quickly. Uh, Ian, uh, who's saying what? Um, we've got Danielle Behan saying hi, and we've got five waves off her. So, hi to Danielle Behan. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Danielle. And, Danielle. <laughs> and Pillow Pilot is asking, what kind of role do you have at EasyJet? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and what kind of planes do you fly? Uh, what kind of places do you fly to do you still fly so um i don't operate as crew anymore um i haven't operated as crew since last year um at easyjet i actually work as a human factor specialist so i work on the ground mostly and i work with pilots cabin crew engineers and ground staff in the human factors department um but yeah the operation obviously spans pretty much all of Europe and into further destinations such as Morocco and um, Tel Aviv, places like that. So it covers a wide area and it, it's a big operation under lots of different entities. So, yeah. Yes. Let's hope uh, Alex answers your question for you. <laughs> uh, and that's about it, Tom, for the time being. Yeah. So I'll hand back over to you. No, that's all right. Thank you. Uh, so so basically, wow. uh, Jer sort of jumped the gun a little bit with the uh, jump onto the onto Virgin. Um but sort of, I like, am sorry, Tom. No, you're all right. You're I'm right. sorry. No, no, you're all right. Um, so how did how did sort of how did that come about then? Before because we'll we'll jump on to sort of what you do now, uh, in a second. But yeah. how did you sort of transition from, um, Jet Two to, to 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 Virgin Atlantic? Um. So again, it it was a very very difficult decision to make. I was very happy at Jet Two, and I was having the time of my life. The company, I cannot fault them. And they are brilliant, and I would fully recommend to anyone thinking about going to work for them in whatever way, absolutely go for it. Um, but there was always something in me that was like, I want to do an experience long haul. And um, the opportunity with Virgin came up, they were recruiting, and I knew that they don't recruit particularly often, is what I was going to say. So I 
I put an application in. I was speaking to someone actually on my flight with Jet2 and oh, she's a good friend of mine and I said to her, I was thinking about it but I wasn't sure because I was happy with my career and this would be a big move and it was it, it was a bit riskier in the sense that I don't live down south at the time, I was living up north. But she just said to me that her friend worked for Virgin and loved it so why not put your application in and just see how you go. So I, I put my application in and didn't again I didn't really rely on it as such I thought if it happened it happened fantastic if it didn't maybe it wasn't meant to be and I thought I'd give it my all and see what happened um I went for the interview and the minute I went for the interview at the base which is at the time where the training center was held I fell in love with it I loved the ethos I loved the people there they were so passionate about what they did um and I think it was one of those where I just went there and I thought yeah this is to be surrounded by such passionate like-minded people every day would be an absolute privilege and the minute I got in there I was like I want to work here I really want it um that night I flew to Dubai because my one of my friends at the time was living in Dubai and I flew from Gatwick out there to see her and thought right I, I'll probably wait here from that for a few more weeks I know how many interviews they're doing I think when I applied they had something like 10,000 applications so I knew it was going to take time to get through um, and it was actually two days later, I was at brunch, um, as, as it happens, like I was stood in the girls' bathroom where all the good gossip goes down in, on a night out, of course, and I got the call from Virgin, they said, um, hi, it's Virgin Atlantic, we would very much like to offer you the position of cabin crew with us starting as soon as possible, really, as soon as we've got a training date for you, would you accept it? And I think I just cried on the spot, I was like, are you really serious? Like, do you, you really want me? And they were like, yeah, we really want you yeah we can't wait to have you on board um and that was that really they offered me a training date a few days later when I'd come back and I was on an Antalya at the time actually as well with Jet2 when I got the email saying your training's in literally two months um and that was that it all happened very very fast wow I suppose in terms of 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 having sort of uh been at sort of Jet2 for as long as you did and then sort of the transition yeah. from let's say like short haul roughly mm -hmm. to sort of the the prospect then of going on to like long haul was it sort of exciting at the same time knowing that you could then sort of um you know explore a bit more of the world oh it was so exciting yeah I I literally remember sitting at home and just thinking wow I'm gonna wake up in Hong Kong one day or I'm gonna wake up in Antigua and I, it, it's still like that phone call when I realized what was about to happen like it still blows my mind to be quite honest and it's something that I just wanted and knowing that the world was going to be open to me essentially through a job and that I was going to get to operate on these iconic aircraft for this iconic brand it was just a true privilege and I was so so excited I wasn't really that nervous about it at the time um because I just knew that I was going to make the most of it and it was going to be an amazing experience no matter what happened hmm. yeah because I imagine that obviously going from places like you know, you your holiday destinations to more of like mm -hmm. over to America, Caribbean, mm -hmm. um, even Hong Kong itself would be sort of a bit like, oh, wow, I'm going to be able to sort of, like you say, wake up in, in either the Caribbean one day or, you know, you, you, yeah. you're traveling here, there and everywhere. Um, so I imagine it was it was a, a really nice sort of prospect as much as it may have been daunting having sort of, you know, say, been so comfortable at Jet2 to, to sort of then leave that and go on to something, um, you know, something else. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't clear cut. I remember I happened to write my notice in uh, Manchester, and it was a horrible feeling, like saying goodbye. And I was so grateful for everything they did, and I'm still very, very good friends with a lot of crew and pilots that work there because I literally think they they gave me my foundations. They gave me the the ethic, the hard work ethic that I had that I could take to Virgin, and I thank them for everything for that. But it was the right move for me to go and essentially chase the dream. And that's what I did. Exactly. And I think it kind of embodies that. I mean, we, we, we spoke during the week um, about the, the sort of the whole thing and the, the amount of sort of hard work you've got to sort of put into, like say, chasing that, that, that sort of dream. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like it embodies that if, you know, um, if you if you put enough behind it, you know, then mm -hmm. like say you can, you, you two can, can um, achieve the dreams that, you know, so many people want to be able yeah. to do, which is to travel the world and sort of get paid for it at the same time sort of thing 
Yeah, definitely, absolutely. I, I do think I'm a firm believer in if you want something enough, you'll work hard enough for it. And there came sacrifice with the decision to to leave. There did come some big sacrifices. For example, leaving my home up north, leaving all my family and friends there, and moving down south. That was a really big risk for me. And moving, I was essentially living at home when I was living at Jetsu, saving for things like a house deposit and stuff. And knew that down south, that wasn't going to be an option. Um, so. I did make some huge sacrifices to do it, but if I had to make the same decision again, I'd make it all over because it it was what I wanted and I really do believe I did get to live the dream. Yeah, it definitely seems like it. And I think a lot of people probably be a little bit envious, actually. I know for certain I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's fantastic. So well, I want to sort of put you on the spot a little bit at the moment. Um, so, Go on. So with the... <laughs> We'll just see if we see if it can be done. Um, so combining obviously your time at Jet Two and Virgin, say sort uh-huh. of what are your top three kind of destinations that you've been to that you think that sort of stick to memory and go, God, that's amazing. I'd love to go back there again. Oh God, top three. Uh... Uh... <laughs> okay, I I love Johannesburg. Yeah. Um, that always used to be a really good trip, mainly because it was so social. Like as crew, it was always a social trip. It always involved like going out as a crew for dinner and things like that. And there's opportunities for crew as well to go on um, like a day safari or something. So it really is an incredible destination to go to. And it's something that probably before going to Virgin, I wouldn't have done. So it, that was a real good experience. Um, Hong Kong, uh, pre-pandemic Hong Kong was incredible. Um, everyone will talk to you as crew about the nights out they have in Hong Kong but it really is just this eclectic crazy city where it's a complete overhaul of sense and sight you just don't know where to look first or see like listen to first there's just so much to take in it's really quite overwhelming but in a good way um and then if I had to pick somewhere a little bit closer to home like I'm a real Europhile I love Europe but it's such a like amazing place and really unspoiled in part of it hmm. um i'm a real fan of southern spain and andalusia so i spent a lot of time there i adore the culture and I, god i can't wait to go when this is all over to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> get back out there and get traveling again yeah absolutely so that would be my top three at the moment but it's something that changes pretty much daily to be honest with you <laughs> yeah so I, I don't blame you i mean you've probably been to so many places that it, you know like i say we probably will change from uh from from time to time so um yeah incredibly lucky i think and um you know at the same time mm-hmm. good on you good on you for being able to to sort of live live that sort of dream yeah yeah well done well yeah. done yeah that's amazing uh, thank you very much yeah. yeah it was a dream come true yeah. and i think i've always been lucky that travels it travel is in my blood it's, it's something my family have always encouraged and prioritized really because it is educational and it is cultural and it, it just broadens your mind in so many ways um, the world is a really crazy big place and you've just got to go out and see it and live it. So, absolutely lucky. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we've got a couple, well, say one, two, three, four, about four questions in the chat. So we're going to pile mm-hmm. those on to you uh, and then we'll okay. get on to sort of your position uh, that you do now. So, uh, Ian, do you want to take it away? Yeah, so Steve Plains is asking, um, when you were cabin crew, what was the mm-hmm. most annoying thing a passenger could do? Oh, um, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's a really difficult question. Um, Without getting yourself in trouble. Oh, yeah. you know what? <laughs> the one thing that really used to get to me was, um, and I say get to me, I, I let things wash over to be fair. If I used to stand at the boarding door and I was boarding and I used to say to people, um, like, hi there, welcome on board. And they'd just say to me, 22F. I'm like, hello to you too. Like, <laughs> we are people speak to us i don't need to be shouted at your seat number but it, <laughs> once you've heard that 300 times in a row that really grates on you so that would be my one thing to people like just say hello to me first i know it's five in the morning i know you'd rather be in bed but say hello oh it's just ignorant yeah, and do, you, do you have to force that smile do you know what i'm a really smiley person and i'm really lucky that every single day i'd go to work with a smile on my face like that is a genuine thing and i love to be in there and there's normally a couple of you around the boarding door anyway that you can have a bit of a sort of a smile to each other and just sort of go you okay yeah yeah you okay yeah that's good and it's that camaraderie again but after 300 times of being shouted at a seat number or that that is hard i will say that i imagine (laughs) i imagine that you probably would have 
looked at the passenger, smiled at them, but I think deep down we all know sort of what you were thinking. So <laughs> <laughs> only a little bit, only uh, like one percent, maybe a bit more than that. But <laughs> <laughs> no, fantastic. Uh, next one, Ian. Um, he, Jack Wood says, "Hey Jordan, um, for your current position at EasyJet, mm-hmm. was your cabin crew experience or degree more important, or both?" Ooh. That's a really interesting question. Um, I don't know the full answer to that because obviously I wasn't on the recruitment panel, so I'm not really sure what they were looking for as such. I know that they did want my, um, they wanted some kind of like either psychology or human factors based educational experience. So that was definitely a major and they did say like aviation experience desirable. So probably from a practical point of view, I'm going to say my HF degree. But from a personable point of view, I truly believe what stands me apart is the fact that I have done the job. I know what people on the line go through. And I really, really care about their well-being and what is best for them. And that, I think, probably matters potentially a little bit more. But that, again, is really a difficult thing to answer. So I'd say both, but they're the reasoning behind yeah, yeah. I think with your experience, um, being cabin crew, you, you've experienced what your job's about, haven't you? So yeah. you're not yeah. just sat there guessing, are you? you you've yep. actually dealt with it first and saw that. Yeah, I will, I will say. So it's, it's probably a bit of both, really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it helps that I know what goes on on the line. Like, you know, I've done the 5am five, 5 Palmers in a row. I know yeah. what fatigue is. I know how working with different bits of equipment on board can be difficult. And I know the difference in what clear policy and procedure can make. So, yeah, I would say it is that. But to be honest with you, the way I think probably comes from my academic background. So, yeah. a bit of both. Yeah, a bit of both, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Pillow Pilot's asking, he says, what kind of emergencies have you had to deal with if any can i just jump in very very quickly <clears throat> yep um that question was from jack woods i just want to say thank you because he actually subscribed to the channel earlier so um yes yeah, so oh, thank you, uh, right, thank right. you jack. just just uh just a very quick sort of cheeky plug um you can carry on now <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> you can you, you can carry on now yeah so um yeah so pillow pilot was asking what kind of emergencies if any have you had to deal with Obviously, you don't have to answer that if you don't need to, if you don't want to. Yeah, no, of course. No, absolutely fine. Um, I've been very, very lucky. Uh, again, I'd say lucky. It's it's not down to luck at all. It's down to the safety of the airlines, really, and the um, how important and imperative mm. safety is to these airlines within the UK and around the world. That I've never really had any huge sort of safety emergencies on board. And although we train for it, um, it's something none of us want to going to work that would be a really bad day in the office and it's yeah. not something we'd look forward to um, no, absolutely anything not. that sort of happened on board would be more medical and related to sort of uh, to passengers and either it be disruptive passengers or medical situations where it has required to get the emergency medical kits out or the first aid kits and communicate with the flight crew and, and talk possible situations like diversions and things like that but Again, that is something that I think most crew will probably go through once or twice in their life, at least, yeah. if not more. Um, it depends on the kind of operation you're doing. And it, it, when it happens, it is a little bit, it, I'd say, like, sort of scary the first couple of times. Because you <laughs> I can are, imagine, yeah, yeah. You, you're 38,000 feet above the ground, away from a hospital and medical care. You, you're making decisions that are life or death in some cases. And yeah. The only thing I can say is you've always got your team around you and you draw on everybody's knowledge and experience and if there's no I in it, it is a we'll get through it together. So that's more the Brilliant. kind of thing you'll go through. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah, you've got so you've yeah. not got a choice, have you, to be fair? Like no. you say you're 38,000 feet, so bit, uh, you can't call a doctor, can you? Absolutely no, not. Luckily, you will sometimes get doctors on board and very often they will come forward without you even having to ask and say, I'm a doctor, I, I can help you in this situation. And it's on those flights, you're like, yes, that is amazing. Thank you so much. Like, yeah. that is fantastic. But sometimes you won't have one or you'll have a flight where someone might not want to come forward. And I don't know if that would happen, but it may happen. So yeah you are using your knowledge and your experience and we're really lucky our aviation medicine training is fantastic in the airlines Mm. we get really great training and we get yearly refresher on it as well so um it is prioritized and people traveling can know that we'll always have their safety at heart so absolutely yeah yeah that's brilliant that yeah Mm -hmm. yes that's quite an interesting one um yeah i I was going to ask you uh there is Mm -hmm. a couple more questions yet but 
I mean, it was just about what was just going through my mind. And you've done the long haul and you've done the short haul, haven't you? Yeah. The, uh, Ibiza's of the world and things like that. Now, <laughs> would you say that you get a, 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 a nicer clientele on the longer haul flights than what you do on the shorter haul holiday flights? Uh, is that something I just read about in news? Do you know what? It is, again, entirely route dependent. And it's not necessarily true that you'll get like a nicer clientele on long haul than short haul. Um, yeah. You, you know, there's plenty of short haul destinations that are just really, really chilled. Your nieces, um, your son Charles. Like, but equally, you can't, and this is something that somebody did tell me in the first couple of months of flying short haul, don't prejudge a flight. Like, there was a time, for example, I turned up for a Prague on a Thursday night and I thought, here we go. Stag do weekend, uh, looked at the passenger manifest, group of 40. I was like, oh God, here we go. This is <laughs> going to be really difficult work. The group of 40 turned out to be a church choir. So Happy it, days. <laughs> it was, oh wow. And they actually sang for us in the middle of the air. And it, it was, it, I've still got the video on my phone actually. It was absolutely incredible. And I remember that lesson really did come into play. I was like, never prejudge your flight. And equally, you know, you can have an Ibiza. And you can have a stag do on it or a hen do and think, oh, this is going to be rowdy. And they're lovely. And you have the most fun ever. And the one thing I'd say to crew, maybe thinking about going into short haul ops and thinking, oh, but what about the Ibizas? What about the Palmas? What about the Zantes? Do you know what? Just think, 99% of them are going to be fine. They might be a little bit happier or merrier to be on their holidays or going on yeah. a stag do or a hen do. But I would probably be, you know, happy and a little bit like sort of merry going on a stag do or a hen do. So the best thing to do is don't prejudge it. Don't try and, uh, I hate to say the word, but don't try and like be the mum to the group. Get them on side and work with them and you'll have a laugh. It will, it will be good fun and they can be really good days out. And similarly with long haul, you might get lots of business passengers and you might do something that's like just a pure holiday flight. You might also do a Vegas that is rowdy, hard work. You might do a Vegas that isn't rowdy and hard work. Every single day, every single flight is different and you just have to rock up with an open mind and go, I'm going to do my job to the best of my ability and offer the best customer service I can to every single passenger, whether they're a business class customer or whether they are an economy customer. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, it is, it is. It's just something. Obviously, yeah. not being a, a cabin crew or anything like that, you just don't think on the same level of what you think about yourself, Jordan. You know, obviously, we're not trained in anything like that, but, you know, it's, it is quite interesting. Um, there is a couple more. Now, Leo911 um, is asking, were you ever scared in any turbulence? Do you know what? No, I've always... <sighs> It's not the nicest of experience if you've got a prolonged moderate turbulence. It can feel a little bit bone shaking, but um, I've never been scared. And I think the beauty of that is I understand how sort of the aircraft works. And I always feel really safe on our aircraft and our pilots are always fantastic. They will do their best to get us out of turbulence as quickly as possible if they yeah. can. Um, so, no, I don't think so. I think more importantly, the sort of... The caring nature of me comes out at that point because my priority number one then is a the safety of the crew, making sure that if we need to be sat down, we're sat down. And two, are the passengers okay? You might have a nervous flyer sat in the middle of the cabin. Are they okay? You want to make sure that they are, you know, coping. And that's the priority one. So you don't really get much time to think about whether you're scared or not. If if I'm honest. All right, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, uh, like you say, your uh, your you customers and what have you come first, aren't they? And that's what you're thinking about Always. all the time, aren't you? Have yeah. you ever had to Have you ever had to get up during a flight in in light in light turbulence or even moderate turbulence and go and attend to a uh, one of your customers? Yeah, absolutely. I have done. Yeah, and when you get that situation, if it was really severe and like it was going to endanger my safety, I would never get up, obviously, because. No. Primarily, I'm there for the safety of the operation as well as our people. Um, but, yeah, there's been occasions where probably light to moderate turbulence, I've had to make an executive decision, like, and somebody quite close, but just a little bit out of reach of being able to speak to from my seat yeah. has been sat there. And then I've had to make a bit of an executive experience decision and say, okay, you're safe to move now. Go and see if they're okay, if there's anything you can do. So it is just a judgment call on those days. Brilliant, oh. right. And the, the final one in this uh, group of questions, um, this is from Curtis Charlesworth, and he's saying, what's your opinion on the 757? <laughs> Why is it your favourite? 
Oh, the 7.5 is not quite my favourite. The 7.8 is my favourite, but I do love the 7.5. Yeah. And what do I love about the 7.5? Um, I would say it just, the overpowered engines, you just can't beat that feeling. Yes, it's, there it is. It, it, it's, it's overpowered. <laughs> it's heavy, but it looks good as well. It's yeah. like long, it's tall, it stands out, and it's just one of those, that like, even if you speak to the pilots who fly it, they love the fact they fly the 7.57. And it's definitely, like, it's on its way out. It's probably had the best of its time, I would say, um, in comparison to some of the more modern aircraft that are coming through that are more fuel energy efficient, because obviously we know sustainability is a huge goal for the airlines right now. Um, And I think it's one of those that a lot of people would love to tick off or would have loved to have ticked off. So, yeah, you can't can't not like flying on it. Yeah, it's just an an old classic, isn't it? Yeah, you feel pretty safe on it, and it's it's... A really good best of both worlds of that in between your short haul 73s, A320s, and your long, wide body sort of A350s. It's a really good yeah. little mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good all rounder. Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's it's a, a lot of people say the same, don't they? It's, it's a lot of people's favourite, isn't it? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it is. Right, uh, that's it for the time being. So, um, right, Tom, well, can we hand back over to you and Joe? Yeah. And- yeah. <clears throat> that's fine yeah, um, I will just I'll throw yeah. my two pence in and go that the 757 has not had its time yet still plenty of years <laughs> left on it um, <laughs> and, I'll, and I won't hear any difference <laughs> <laughs> alright awesome. awesome Tom can't, can't awesome. beat the rocket honestly um, it, it, but oh, yeah, yeah. it's like like Jordan said like a lot of people want to sort of tick it off their list and I'm I'm one of those people so um, if, hopefully once you know, ever, you know there's more places on the green list and everything else and um, you know the 757s are back doing what well, they should be doing. Um, I'll hopefully try and get on one. But mm. um, but yes. So away from uh, obviously the the cabin crew side now, and we'll get on to sort of more what you do now um, mm-hmm. as a human human factors specialist with EasyJet. Um, mm. What prompted the sort of the change in change in career? Because I imagine going from um, cabin crew to something that's you know the, the way that I perceive it is something that's a bit more sort of. Um, I want to sort of say this correctly as well without sort of um, there's sort of more to it more to it than there is for the cabin crew side of things what sort of prompted the uh, um, sort of the change was it something that you looked at and you looked at it and thought actually it sounds like a really good idea I might actually give that a go again this it's one of those things where everything kind of happened for a reason and it did slot into place so if we've so backtrack to last summer when I graduated from my undergraduate degree and passionately declared that I was never going to study again, thanks to my dissertation. Um, I didn't know at the time I was about to lose my job due to the pandemic. So then that happened and I, my priority one was finding a way to stay in touch with the industry. And the way that I was going to do that was better myself to come back to the industry stronger and more knowledgeable. And the obvious way to do it was a master's degree which was something that, despite my passionate declaration, was always going to be on the card. But probably in about three years' time, once I'd settled into long-haul life and flown everywhere I wanted to fly, like fly and everything. Um, so I sort of was thinking about, what do I want to study? And I knew it was going to be in aviation, but I wasn't quite sure. And then it came to me that actually the bit that I loved most about sort of my recurrence and initial trainings was the human factors side of training and it's something you study as cabin crew anyway in a very brief sort of way because it is really important to the operation and I started looking into courses that were related to it and realized there was a fantastic course at Coventry University which was distance learning so no matter where I ended up in the grand scheme of the world in the next year I, I would still be able to manage and still be able to do so I applied and then was really lucky I got successful and enrolled which that started in September and it was probably the best decision that I could have made at the time and to this day I'm still very 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 fortunate to be surrounded by the most incredible cohort of people that have a really strong diverse background in aviation so I I study with pilots, ATC, I work with people in the military, I like all these different things and it covers the globe so it covers from, you know, as far as Australia to China, Dubai, UK, America, Canada. So there's people from everywhere. And that's when I realized that, I mean, people say aviation's a global industry. It is. But when I realized that there was all these people who had done all this incredible stuff out there within aviation across the world, 
that's when it really dawned on me how global and how big and diverse this industry could be. Um, so I was plodding along with this degree and it's like, you know, I'm at the point now where I'm sort of starting to think about my thesis with it. Um, and then this role came up on and it was, it was sent to me actually by a friend who I trained with at Virgin who knew I was looking for a new job and was trying to get back into aviation and he sent it to me and was like this has got you written all over it and um I remember looking at the job advert and I was like this is everything I could want it's brilliant it talks about everything that I'm interested in the role is so diverse one day you could be looking at the design of a piece of equipment on board the next you could be looking at um mental health and well-being of pilots and crew and I just thought this is incredible and EasyJet as an airline they're an amazing company one that I've followed and loved for years probably since I used to watch airline when I was like six or something ridiculous like that (laughs) and it just again I applied for it thought nothing of it thought right if this works out fantastic if it doesn't it doesn't um and then it worked out and there I am now so it, again it was a bit of a process from making that decision last summer really where I enrolled so yeah wow yes, that's it's, absolutely yes, it's amazing quite a, quite a different sort of transition go on Jeff. Uh, I was just saying there Tom yeah I remember um I remember that show on um on um on, on one of the channels there, uh, uh, airline. I used to love it. Thought it like you know, and you know, you when you'd watch it, like you'd actually see the way um, the way um, uh, the crew had to deal with uh, very rude passengers sometimes. Uh, uh, yeah. There, if, uh, like if there were like say like uh, a flight flight was cancelled or or the flight was full, the still the still went down. Oh, oh, I need to be on this flight. I need to be on that yes. flight or whatever. You know, uh, um, the thing is, uh, you 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 never had to deal with a situation like that, had you, uh, uh, Jordan? No, no, never, no, like never. Good, <laughs> good, good, good. Thank God for that, because because like, um, what was the name? What was the name of the 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 the, the head chap that used to be actually uh, um, on on air? He, he had a lovely, oh, he had a lovely way about me. I used to love uh, love his uh, the way he used. To to deal with situations and all, he was so calm. He was uh, so collective. Like he, he was one. He was one of the easy jet members, and and, and I, I used to always see him every time. Time was the show. It, come on. Was it the blonde guy? Was it Lee? Leo Jones. Lee, yeah. Leo I ta- Jones. I thought. Ta- <laughs> you know something? I thought. Ta- I thought ta- he was absolutely awesome because he knew. He knew to be able to handle situations so so well. You know, is mm. he is is he still around? I don't know, you know, it would be really interesting to know. I know there is some people, so there is someone who, I won't name, but there is someone who started, who was on EasyJet as I think he was a dispatcher when it, the series started. And yeah. he, he actually ended up um, in management at Jet2 when I was there. Oh, wow. So, oh, still right, in the industry. God. So, people stick around for a while. And the, the industry yeah. is big, but small. Everyone knows everybody. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, before, before I let... Um, uh, continue uh, there. There, um, uh, there is one uh, very important uh, question I, I, I did want to ask, and uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's it's how how long um, how long were you with uh, Virgin Atlantic? Not long at all. So I actually ended up there for about nine months in the end. So really short lived, um, which was a right. shame. It was COVID cut short, unfortunately, but it happened, and that's that really. So <laughs> that's awesome, yes. man. Tell me. What 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 was your favorite what was your favorite long haul destination you went to? I didn't get to take off a lot of what I wanted to do, but I would I definitely say I had to say Joburg. Loved it. Had the wow. best time, and it was my wow. first flight as well. Wow. Joburg was the first trip I did, so it was it will always be in my heart a little bit. Ah, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. That's that you know something. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing to learn to learn learn different things about uh, the airline industry and how how it works. Like uh, like. My ambition, like when uh, when I was when I was uh, growing up, I, I always wanted to be uh, an airline pilot or something, mm. or even something, or even something to maybe to do uh, with working working maybe as a baggage handler or maybe cabin crew or something like that. Yeah. But I never, uh, sadly, I never, I never got to fulfil the dream, but like you know, because because I always, I always was thinking about other 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 things when I should be focusing maybe maybe on things things like that. Like I always said. My mother, like uh, I said, I wonder what would they be like if I 
even when it became one of one of, one of those uh, things. And she she said to me uh, 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 many a time. She says, "Do you know something? You'd probably make an absolute good pilot uh, or captain or, or whatever." To her, but sure, look as I say. Uh, I always look back at the at the, at the good points uh, of uh, of uh, growing up, and, I sh- and I'm sure I'm sure you do yourself sometimes as well. Yeah, always. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of one of those things for me where career has always come first and yeah I've made some like huge sacrifices to ensure that it stays at the top of my priority in school I, I worked hard I got really good GCSEs got my degree we'll have a master's we'll go on to do a PhD at some point and it, it's one of those things where you know ignoring the rest of like life is difficult but it's the hard work pays yeah. off so yeah. yeah, well, well, I, 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 I want one special thing to say to you. Anyway, I wish, I wish, you, I wish you the best of uh, luck in the future with uh, EasyJet, and hopefully, hopefully, you go along, along uh, way with them. I love, I love, I love the livery. I absolutely love the, the airline livery, and hopefully, hopefully, now uh, if I if I get to visit uh, Liverpool at the towards the end of July, please God. I, Get to see plenty of uh, easy jets at uh, Liverpool John Lennon Airport because oh, I just I hope you know, say. yeah no I'm I'm, I'm I, I've been looking forward to uh, getting getting a little break a break a break as everybody has like you know yeah. with everything everything that's happened and that sure uh, look Tom I'll, I'll hand I'll hand the floor back to you for a few minutes and uh, and uh, uh, what an amazing show it's all, it's absolutely <laughs> awesome so it is that's all right that's all right um. Yeah, so before we do carry on, um, I'm just going to quickly hand it over to Ian because we've got, uh, we got somebody who's departed. Yeah, oh, Jer- nice. oh, oh, yeah nice. Jerry McCall-Isle. He's got to go now, but he's uh, uh, thanking Jordan and everyone for an excellent chat and best of luck with everything, Jordan. Cheers. Bless you. Thank you very uh, much. Thanks for tuning in. Wonderful. Yeah, uh, thank you, nice thank one. you, Jeremy, for popping in as always. He's one of our sort of our regular... Um, oh, bless. Oh, yeah. viewers. So, yeah, he's, no, the he's the best. Yeah. He's the best. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, Leo nine eleven's asking a question as well now. Can I repeat oh, that, Tom? Or not? You, you, you can. I have double checked. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So, have you ever caught a couple um, <laughs> in in the plane up to no good? Wow. <laughs> 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 uh, <well. laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny that that does indeed happen. Um, But it's something that I just don't understand. Like, I just would never understand that. Like, it's it's bizarre. And I can't think of a less romantic place, to be honest. (laughs) Uh, Um, You don't get a medal. You don't get a medal when you leave it plain or anything, do you? No, you might get arrested. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, fair enough. It's yeah. probably not worth it. <laughs> one thing I thought you might have got a certificate or something. No, okay. One thing's for certain: I wouldn't want to sort of be doing that while there's heavy turbulence. You know. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll end up, get, I'll end up taking that. the credit for it, and I'll be like, "No, it's just the turbulence. Don't get too excited." Yeah, I think I think you should leave that conversation where it is now, Tom, it's and just a, move on. A, yeah, it's a no holds barred fucking um, you know podcast. We can we can go with it. Um, but no, it's fine. Uh, what I will say, is, uh, Jack Wood said that it was Leo Jones, like I like I said, uh, the the chap that um, Joe was referring to earlier on on airline from from EasyJet, Leo Jones. Oh yeah, Leo, that's oh, it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I know this because awesome. I follow him on Twitter and keep up to date with him what he's doing. So, oh, that's your bit. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Leo Jones is is the chap. So um, yes, uh, let's yeah let's let's oh, Tom. go on. Um, do you know something? He'd be, he'd be, he'd be a very good candidate. He would. Mm, I've tried. Uh, <laughs> that's oh, all, have that's you? All, that's oh, all I'm going to say. I've tried. I've tried. Okay. Okay. Um, but yes. Um, do, 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 do. I'm just going to say. Well, the thing is, we're talking about airline. Um, my favourite was the uh, checking girl Jane. She had a right sassy attitude, and yeah, Jane would, was great. You wouldn't want to mess Jane. with her. No, absolutely not. But she was very good. She knew her stuff. She was very professional. I full admiration for Jane. Yeah, yeah. She was like, I think even like now because sometimes the episodes get shown again, um, and if I watch it, I'm like, go on, Jane. You tell that. You tell that passenger what's for. <laughs> I'm like sitting there. I'm like rooting for her. I'm like, go on. You know, give her what's for. Absolutely. But um, but yes. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll swiftly move on um, uh, and back to sort of the role that you do. So just for anybody that sort of, yeah, I mean, I know we sort of explained 
um, before when the question was asked about what your sort of role entails. But yeah. just sort of in depth, um, what exactly is uh, is your role as a, a humans a human factor specialist? So I basically look at anything that relates to how the human interacts with the operation and the machinery that we use. So that could be anything from looking at how crews have made decisions that they've made on board, um, looking at the mental health and well-being of cabin crew and pilots, engineers, ground staff, um, anything like that, looking at the design of pieces of equipment or a procedure that's coming into the fleet or the operation and seeing how it worked from a human point of view um, and also making sure that any sort of investigations and risks are managed within the airline to ensure that safety is of course always paramount but we really do put the people at the heart of that my mission essentially so I'm always looking at it from a human point of view so it can be really diverse and it can be very volatile sometimes in that you know if something happens in the industry for example like the pandemic that is going to have a direct impact on how people interact with the operation and their mental health and well-being so we have to go with it and really try and adapt what we do and make sure that our people are well looked after awesome and it's also sort of um so it's, it's kind of like the 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 nitty sort of nitty gritty sort of side of things where it's you know you're looking in into pretty much everything um, and that also yes. involves sort of pilots and things like that in terms of go arounds and yeah. stuff if I'm correct yes correct so yeah it will be looking at things like go arounds and sort of assessing why they made the decisions they did um, was everything okay to procedure is there anything we could improve for the future and it's like the thing with um the role that I do it's not looking for anyone to point the finger at we don't blame we have this thing called just culture which basically means that if something happens you can put your hand up and say this happened I'm not sure if it was right whether I made a mistake or you know but I want to own up to it because it posed a safety risk or a near miss or whatever and we will look into it and adapt what we do to make it safer and better for everybody without like sort of a punitive action so we're not going to say oh you've done something wrong you don't deserve to fly we're going to look at it and go how can we make this better obviously that's not the same as saying if something was grossly negligent or gross misconduct that you can get away with it You, you can't but if it's just something that you know i don't know like something's been missed on an approach into somewhere and someone's gone oh i missed this on the approach and it wasn't clear i couldn't see it on whatever the flight plan or the whatever they're looking at then we will look at it and make sure that it's better the next time and it's just always working together not pointing the finger and making sure that we really do deliver the best service for everybody so just trying to almost sort of find ways to improve on um little sort of well, I don't want to say errors because that's probably not the best way of putting it. But I think you sort of you, you kind of understand what I'm trying to sort of get yeah. at. It's almost just trying to improve every time, sort of try and get sort of the best out of not just obviously like the pilots and stuff, but anyone that sort of falls under that category of you know everyone that gets sort of analysed in a way. Yeah, we're just looking to make what we do safer all the time, and that you know the industry is forever evolving with the ever changing atmosphere that we live in and the ever changing world we live in. So we need to change with it and make sure that when we do, I mean, change is a scary word within aviation. People don't tend to like it, but change does happen, and it's we need to move with it and make sure that when we do, the changes we make are safe and appropriate. Mm. And that's where I come in. Oh, fantastic! Brilliant. So, sort of take us through. I mean, I, I've, I've, like I said, since Wednesday, been looking up sort of, um, you know, the the whole sort of side of things. Because for me, I've, I've never mm. actually heard of the the job role before. So, as soon as you said it, yeah. I was like, oh, oh, I didn't even know that sort of existed. So, I've been looking through, um, sort of various articles and things like that. Um, tell us a little bit about like what, uh, I mean, if you can or or not, but um mm. sort of how, a day basically a, a 24 hours of what it's like to be uh, you know from the moment you go in to the moment you sort of go home sort of thing that is really difficult because every day is so 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 different um and i think that changes the operation but i think it, it it mostly would involve like it depends what you're looking at so if you're looking at the development of well-being or any sort of like peer support anything like that you could be um looking at how to make that better or more, more appropriate for what you do 
and um, you're looking at anything that happens within the week in the operation you've got to have your finger on the pulse and make sure that whatever's happening you're looking at it and going that's fine yep and if nothing comes in nothing comes in that's amazing if something does come in you're looking at it to make sure that y you understand it from your point of view it will go to every department in the in the building but i think the best way i can describe what i do is if you look at something like i mean everyone knows the case where the miracle on the hudson where sully landed on um on the river in new york um, that was a, a key human factors case and it was key because the decisions that he made in that flight deck saved that aircraft and saved all of those lives all of those people walked away because he basically made the decision to switch on the APU and then flew it because of his experience and his knowledge and that means that when essentially the investigation happened they could look at it from his point and go look this is his decision making that he made at this point and he made that decision because of x y and z which led to outcome a if he hadn't have made that decision then we would have had outcome b and then from that you can go well outcome a is more desirable we need to make sure that is in procedure and clearer for next time and all of that, looking at how crews communicate with each other, which we call CRM, which is crew resource management, okay. how they work with the machine and the tools that they've got, that is what we would do if it came in. So if you ever do get a second to read the reports, I think they're online still from like the NTSB and stuff from that, because um, we studied it as part of my master's as well. Yeah. If you ever do get a second to have a look, and there'll be a huge section dedicated to human factors in it because it was a big human factors case and it's a it's still talked about today on courses and um, do give it a read because that's a really good sort of example of the way we'd look at it from not an engineering perspective but a hf point of view um but yeah it's something that's still quite it's something that within the airlines is still gaining that prominence if i'm honest with you and um, it's a newer form of psychology or engineering depends on the department you wanted to put it under hmm. some some universities would put it under a psychology department where i am actually puts it in the school of engineering um and i think it's aerospace and engineering i think it's the school it comes under um and it is a bit of both if i'm honest with you um but it's still evolving it's still pretty not new because it's not brand brand new but in the grand scheme of industries it is new and therefore, it is getting um, more and more prominent. I think post-COVID-19, we will see a huge increase of work with human factor specialists because there's a lot to consider in bringing people back into the workplace from COVID-19. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And, and obviously, like I said, it's a new role for you and you've not been doing it for very long, have you? Uh, no, not at all. Like, um, I think I started like three, two weeks ago. <laughs> so, um, the role is still new to me. I am still learning myself, but getting my feet under the table and it's good news but human factors is something i've been studying seriously since august and then i've worked with it on initials recurrence and in my job role since when i first started in the airlines all those years ago so it's something that has always been of interest to me and will always be of interest to me and yeah my focus at the moment is making sure that when people return to work they are like physically and mentally fit to fly and that that doesn't mean turning around to people and saying oh you haven't done three workouts a day during COVID-19 that is making sure that they are supported to return from it because I think everybody's had a really difficult time during this last year and a half of whatever we've been going through yeah of course um and obviously yeah. like I say because yeah. you've been doing it for, for such a short time I, I imagine you're enjoying it I love it yeah I absolutely do love it I wake up every day and I'm like oh today's gonna be a good day I've got this to look forward to today or oh got a really like sort of enjoyable interview or I'm gonna think about looking at training this week or whatever so it's a really great opportunity great role and I still get to fly in my spare time so as a private pilot so I really have got the best of both worlds what what more could you oh, want <laughs> exactly yeah exactly yeah, yeah. no you said you Although I do wonder what it's like to wake up and think, oh, today's going to be a good day, because I don't think I've had that for a while. So I'll, I'll take it. I'll, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take whatever comes my way. But yeah, fantastic to kind of like yeah. say, be able to do that sort of job and also be able to um, uh, sort of fly at the same time, because like you said, at the top of the uh, top of the introduction there, um, you are yeah. currently studying for your uh, PPL. I am, yeah, I am. Although I've wow. had three lessons rained off now because apparently it's not June in the UK, but um, <laughs> we we will get there. We will get there. We'll get a bit of sun eventually. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Does <laughs> hey, does late at the end of the tunnel, as I say. Um, um, 
George, I was just going, just uh, just listening to uh, you talking about the 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 incident on the on the Hudson River. Uh, mm-hmm. I, would you believe it. I haven't even I haven't even watched that movie yet. Uh, the one with the one with Tom Hanks. Uh, would you oh, you've that? got to. I know. Uh, I've had um, I've had several people. Uh, where have you been? Said to me, Jer. Uh, <laughs> I know. Where have I fucking been? Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. I've seen it like, what, like ten times now already. So I think there's something he says at the end which pretty much sums up because there's this in the film the um, the board that are investigating what happens they're looking yeah. for like looking to point the finger at the pilot and that's what we try not to do now with human factors because yeah. human error is a thing we accept it but it's not looking to blame someone I think Tom Hanks says something about like you're looking for human error so make it human mm. like meaning make your yeah. investigation human like make sure it, it fits the parameters of what we were going through and I just think that sums up exactly what I do in one line yeah but you know something it was what it was actually some big feet or to be able to actually get an aircraft uh, down, down on the surface of the water like uh, and and like you know like all the passengers like thanks for the god like we're all uh, all all rescued and so, yeah so now the now the aircraft is a, a yeah. museum a museum piece you know it's yes. fantastic yeah, yeah. Uh, it's skill yeah. it's pure skill experience and good decision yeah. making and good crew resource management and it's it's the perfect example of you know something going terribly terribly wrong at work and it could have gone yeah. so so different but it didn't, yeah. and it's because of his skill and things like that, and that we can learn from that. So yeah, well, I think you know something. I think now tonight, I think I I have my yeah, like now plan. So I think I might actually uh, put my feature up and uh, and uh, uh, watch that. I think that that be that be a good idea. Do it. It's one of my favourite films of all time, so it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah. Snap. Yeah. Like, I'll, yeah. I'll watch it yeah. like as and when I get sort of time to do it because. The story it tells is is absolutely fantastic, and I think the way I mean I love yeah. Tom Hanks anyway, but the way that he portrays yes. uh, Captain Sully is 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 absolutely fantastic. Probably one of his best roles, I think. Amazing, so, yeah, yeah. Get on it. Yeah. Start watching it. Like even if you do it now, like, start watching it. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Tom. Start watching. Yeah. It. Um, I'll quickly jump into the comments there. Um, we got uh, Grey Blue who says hello. Um, now. Uh, Ian, would you like to tell me who exactly Grey Blue is? She's my daughter. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, yes, hello, hello to you. you. Yes. Ah, hello. Big show out. Hello. Yeah. Um, yeah. She, she's asking you, uh, Jordan. She says, um, "What are your what are your future ambitions, and would you ever consider becoming an airline pilot?" future ambitions that's a really again interesting question and i mean the future awesome. sort of ambition is basically to have a lovely long and happy successful career within the airline industry and um, that is priority one if i had the choice to combine like my human fashion experience with some kind of flying role i would absolutely go for it but equally i think the most important thing recently has been to embrace where you are at and embrace the opportunities that come at you if you'd have told me five years ago this is where i was going to be now i'd have said absolutely not so you'd never know what's around the corner and i love what i do now and i'm so blessed to say that so it's just a case of continuing to enjoy all the opportunities that are presented to me in order to have this amazing career my other priorities would be um sort of working with people to increase diversity and equality within the industry i'm a really passionate sort of believer in increasing diversity and trying to inspire young people to enter the industry whether it is as cabin crew as a pilot as an engineer as an atc controller as a human factor specialist like the careers are there and i think people aspiring aviators and aviatrix have had a really difficult time the last year because they've seen a real sort of increase in don't go into the industry there's no jobs obviously it's been hard hit by the pandemic the pandemic will end at some point it is it's gonna have to it has to end and life has to go back on and everybody will be needed and then some because that pent-up demand is there we know that when things happen in the industry um it comes back bigger and better and it comes back stronger and this is potentially one of the worst things we've had to go through so we'll come back even better 
So yeah, I, I really am a passionate, passionate believer in trying to inspire that next generation. They have a hard enough time. I think young people have it really difficult at the moment. And so if I can be that person that sits there and goes, hey, you want to be cabin crew? Yeah, you can go for it. I'll help you get there. Or you want to be a pilot? No problem. I'll put you in touch with so-and-so. Or you want to study a master's? I'll get you through it. That's what I will be there to do. And that is a huge priority in my life and is something that as someone who has got a little bit of a platform and a voice, I do try and make sure that I tell people, like, you can do this. If I'm doing it, you can too. Work hard, you've got it. That's my that's oh, my wow. long term goal. Fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah. Brilliant. It's really it's a really, really yeah. nice ethic to take into take into any industry to be fair, isn't it? Not just in the airline mm-hmm. industry, but um, yeah. Yeah, you know, you, you could be a public speaker, Jordan. You really could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure if no one wants to listen to my northern tones all day, but um, <laughs> I'll listen to mine. <laughs> <laughs> no choice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Really hard. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. No, it's a re- it's a really it could be good... one of these. Go on. Yeah, I was going to say you get these people who um, like go to schools and things, don't they? And they get all like the year 11s in the hall, and then yeah. they'll get somebody like you on, and you can just stand there and you know Absolutely. talk to them, can't you, and inspire yeah. them. Yeah. Absolutely, outreach is something that I'd really love to get into as like a sort of STEM ambassador, someone who has gone and done his sort of like slightly more technical role within the industry and knows people who yeah. have done it I would love to stand in front of a year 11 cohort and go hey you want to do this you didn't even know it was an option right well you can go and do it even no yeah. matter what it is and I do get younger people reach out to me and some of my friends are teachers now and they'll reach out to me and say hey I've got a year 12 people who wants to be cabin crew what should she be studying and I'll say right don't worry about this but do x y and z and you know consider this and maybe think about you know stuff they don't maybe know yet and yeah i've got all the time in the world for young people i think they're special and i think they've had a hard enough time so yeah if anyone needs any help they know where to find me fantastic. yeah fantastic that's really really nice that yeah <clears throat> it's a nice little um nice little sort of little uh, uh bit of an incentive really like if you can you know if you can put the effort in and you can put sort of you know um if you can put the effort in in doing other things and you can put the effort in to do you know chase after your dreams like we said you know uh, yeah. anything anything is possible and you know if you if you say you want to sort of set out to, to do something um and go chase it and work as hard as you know a lot of people have done like like yourself and and other people that say that we've had um on on the on the podcast before who you know are either pilots or they work in in one one way or another in the aviation industry then mm. you know it can be achieved and and i think especially if we're going sort of like now in the present, I think you are kind of like the embodiment of that because of the amount of work you've had to put into, you know, and the obstacles as well that, that, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's obviously no, no picnic to be able to sort of just go from, from this, that, uh, this, that and everything else. Um, no, but... not at all, but it's worth it. And I wouldn't take back a single one of those obstacles now because every time it just diversifies you and makes you stronger. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely wonderful. Um, <clears throat> I think we're probably gonna. I mean, we we could literally talk until like you know the sun comes up like tomorrow morning. But um, yeah, I totally agree, Tom. <laughs> but um, I I think what we do is well, we're gonna sort of start to close close it here. Um, but what we tend to do first uh, before we um, say say our goodbyes and everything is we like to sort of take this time to to give a few people whether they're close to us or colleagues or um you know uh, pretty much anybody really um a, a nice little shout out just to let everybody know that we're sort of um thinking of them and we tend to go uh, we're gonna put you on the spot again jordan uh, we tend to go with the um go with the guest first um so uh, yeah you can shout out and say hello to as many people as you like um yeah oh so my now god you're Oh God! Right. Um, obviously, I will say um, a shout out to my mum, my dad, my sister, um, who I obviously really miss, and they live far away from me now, but we're still very close. Um, I'll say a shout out to my housemate Chloe, who is like my little cheerleader, and she is um, she's in the industry as well. So we go through this whole thing together. Um, which is good and then I'll just say a massive shout out to every single person that I either have worked with or had the privilege of coming across in my life whether that be via Instagram or at the flight school or any of my instructors anything like that and just say like thank you for being a part of my journey and yeah and just 
I really hope that, you know, we all get where we want to be and just keep going in this life. And yeah, I think that would be my shout out. Pretty much everybody I know them, basically. No, that's, that's absolutely fine. We always say, I always say to people, you know, um, there's no sort of time limit. So you can literally, if you had like a massive list, which we'll get onto in a minute, um, <laughs> then, um, then yeah, you can shout out as many people as you like. But um, yeah, I think you know, if, if, if that's, uh, it, yeah, that's, that's quite quite cool um but we'll we'll jump on to um the uh, the list um jeff oh tom i knew you did all something i could read your mind that you're actually coming to me what uh, you do um, this i'm just gonna go first, put the kettle on the first oh yeah go put the kettle on <laughs> hey you can make me hey tom you can make me a nice hot cup of coffee with that It'll get cold by the time you finish i love it but anyway tom, <laughs> go on are you, are you shouting out tom's... this week well, the first, the first uh, people to shout out is uh, uh, yourself, of course, uh, uh, our, our wonderful whole. I'll okay, the first I'll give one. You the, the big... Oh, you're the first one, yes. Uh, 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 John, you're the second one. I, I give you, give the big shout out and uh, thank you very much for uh, being a part of the this wonderful show this uh, weekend. It's and Miss, uh, and. Uh, as well, of course, uh, Jordan. I I am going to ask you a question. Is there any is there any beautiful lady out there that <laughs> that I could get married to? Because I'm crying out for a relationship <laughs> at the moment, as usual. <laughs> uh, so I had to pop the question because I'm 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 looking for that special person in my life. Hopefully, down the line. Uh, Ian Hartley, my good friend. A big shout out to you. Uh, Thank as you very much, yeah. Thank you. And. Uh, well, and well, well done on, on uh, reading the comments uh, uh, this evening. And of course, big shout out to everybody uh, on the comments that uh, uh, took part. And uh, and of course, to all my wonderful followers and friends on Facebook, big big shout out to each and every one of them. And uh, of course, a big shout out to myself uh, for uh, being, uh, being part of this uh, wonderful show this week weekend episode 14 hard to believe it tom we're uh we're climbing the ladder and of course not forgetting as i always do uh any week is to all our uh, uh special frontline workers out there that are doing uh, an absolute tremendous job uh keep us keeping everybody safe and uh and uh, all our all our health health staff in the NHS and the HSE here in in Ireland as well, and the law enforcers and emergency services doing an absolute tremendous job. And of course, uh, to to the to the Kelly family who are very close to here in Kilkenny, to to the Fallen family as well, uh, and very close to them as well. Uh, big shout out to everybody that I know. I I just hope I haven't forgotten any anybody special or anything. And Jordan, I want to uh, I want to wish you well uh, in 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 your future uh, um, as you as you work towards uh, being a, a, an easy jazz uh, cabin crew member. And best of luck to that uh, as well uh, for you. Awesome. Thank you very much. No, it's been an absolute pleasure being on tonight. So it's been absolutely lovely. And I wish you all the best, guys. It's really, really great. And the show is brilliant. So Thank you. fantastic work. Thank you. Um, so before Thank I do my shout-outs, um, one, I hope I'm, I'm not going to get copyright struck for this. But two, um, Jordan, I kind of need you to ask, answer Jer's question about uh, uh, finding Jer a wife as I play some background music. Two seconds. Is there a lady out there for Joe? I mean, there's someone for everyone. So yes, keep going. Ah, that's 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 a, a lovely compliment. I uh, and uh, I, I do. Mean, I mean, I'm, I'm no dating expert. <laughs> like you know, I can't get a text back most times, so I wouldn't ask me for tips. To be quite <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> But yes, I do believe there is somebody for everybody. Very good. Very because good. Jordan, Jordan, I'm going to tell you something now uh, uh, before Tom does his wonderful shout-outs. And uh, I love when Tom does, does his shout-outs. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, I am going to say one thing. I'm 40, 49 years uh, single. Would you believe that? No. Yeah, 49 
49 years. It's, uh, it, it, I, I, I don't know where, to be honest with you, the guys that even agree, uh, I don't know where I'm going wrong or or, or what I'm doing wrong or, or anything, but, uh, but I'm... I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep persevering. And just to let you know, if you want to follow, follow, follow me on uh, Instagram. I and of course I'll get you to uh, add me as a friend on uh, Discord, I suppose uh, uh, later on. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, uh, uh, don't be afraid to send me a friend request. Uh, uh, I I do some interesting, lovely live streams sometimes. I I do play lovely, lovely music. Tom and Ian have heard me heard my lovely lives, haven't you guys? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ian, I love you. I love you the way you... The way you... <laughs> oh, yes. But I'm, 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 I'm staying right out of it, me, Joe. I'm staying out of it. <laughs> okay, mate. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a dating show. It's an aviation yeah. show. <laughs> yes. Come on, everyone. But you know something, but you know something guys? Avi- a- aviation shows don't bring good people together, too. Yeah. Well, they can. Oh, dear, but anyway, Tom... Hey right, Tom, go on with your shout out there, mate. Come on, <laughs> sorry, sorry for cut, cutting you now, but uh, I'll let you get back to it. We'll have Paddy McGuinness walk through my bloody door in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, woo! No lie, T. No lie, T. Oh, woo! <laughs> I don't know. Oh, um, right, oh, yeah, this back, is back, to, uh, back to the shout outs. Um, so, yeah, my, my first shout out goes to uh, everyone that's been watching this evening. Um, and contributing with comments, um, so a big thank you to to everybody um, for for you know the continued support on the um, on the show. Um, you know, as mu- as long as people want to watch it, um, we'll keep throwing out uh, episodes and stuff. And um, yeah, we got some some really good sort of guests coming up in the in the near future. Um, so yeah, wow. we'll, we'll keep keep throwing them out as as long as people want to want to keep watching them. Um, Second shout out goes was well, more of a thank you goes to Jordan for for your time this evening. I think everyone's been um, you know everyone's, awesome. been, everyone's enjoyed uh, hearing sort of your your stories and stuff from um, over your career and that and um, yeah uh, you, you, I know you were slightly nervous coming on but yeah you did you've done you done really <laughs> well so yeah big thank you for for your time this evening. I know it's a pleasure anytime honestly it's been a real good sort of evening having a good chat and all things aviation so thank you so much for having me on yeah that's right that's uh, brilliant yeah that's our our pleasure it's been it's been been wonderful um shout out to Joe for um turning this into take me out um and um oh thanks Tom (laughs) (laughs) oh oh, I love it I love it and of course the uh, the other sort of little thing of being a co-host of the uh, of the podcast so uh, well done again and uh, obviously well done on coming back and um, yeah continuing continuing the good good vibes and that and uh, to Ian who um, yeah did well down in the basement at uh, co- uh, Comment Central so yeah well done yeah thank you very well much done, yeah, yeah yeah I well will come done, up with yeah, a name for the brilliant. Comment Centre or something like that I'll come up with something oh yeah yeah I'll come yeah, up with something if anyone's got any suggestions as to what we can call Ian's little comment section um, you know he, he he was adamant that we don't name it anything but I figured we're 14 episodes in I think we should probably start calling it something so uh, if anyone's got any suggestions, you know, chuck them our way, and we'll we'll go from there. But um, but yeah, no. Hey other than Tom, that, go on. Here's another thing. Uh, don't forget to mention uh, mention thumbs up uh, to any any of the people in the comments uh, if if they would like uh, uh, Jordan to come back in the near future uh, on on the show. Uh, uh, do a catch up or something. Uh, we like don't that. That'd be, no, that'd we be, don't need thumbs up brilliant. from that. She'll be back. Oh, I will absolutely yeah. be back. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, she'll be back. Awesome. She'll be back. We've got loads awesome. more stories to go through yet. So, yeah, oh it's yeah, good. it's all good. Um, but no. Um, uh, and the last sort of shout out for the evening is to uh, sort of almost echo Joe, frontline workers, um, NHS, you know, health services around yeah. the world for continuing their hard work and that. Um, and I'm going to also echo Leo nine one ones, um. Uh, shout out to all the air traffic controllers who are constantly keeping oh yes um yeah nice safe from uh from, you know day in day out so big shout out to absolutely they little legends absolute yes. legends absolute legends they are so, every every single one of them yes and well so, done to them. big big shout out to like say front frontline workers and of course the uh, atc yeah um yeah that, that'll just about do it we'll, we'll mention next week's guest um which is going to be a really good one 
Um, oh, so, um, yes. A lot of people may have, you know, that are watching may have um, may may know of a a streaming site uh, called From Brussels to the Skies. Um, and uh, recently, they've been doing. I mean, they're, they're based in in Brussels. Obviously, didn't need to point that one out, but I did. Um, wow! And uh, they do lots of uh, live streams from Brussels Airport and, of course, uh, Amsterdam Schiphol as well. And recently filmed yeah. uh, Air Force One uh, leaving uh, Brussels, I believe. Um, while That's right, the, Tom. while Joe Biden was sort of in the area. Um, so next week we are joined by the founder and the host of the streams, uh, Marwan Osef. Uh, he'll be joining us next week Woo! to uh, discuss his uh, streaming platform and, um, yeah, pretty much talk all things aviation with us. So fingers crossed you guys can join us um, for next week. But, um, yeah, uh, that is going to do it for this show. And I, I, I did say to you it would fly by and we've been going for an hour and 41 minutes. So... That's amazing, Tom. That's wow. flown by. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't lie when I say. You know something, Jordan. Do you know something, Jordan? It went too. It went too, <gasps> too, too, too bloody fast. It did. It really do, always does. They say time flies when you're having fun, though, don't you? So. It yeah, does. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It certainly does. But um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we yeah next week's one should be should be pretty good. So hopefully everyone can join us down. we same time, seven p.m. Um, next Sunday, um, and uh, yeah, that that's gonna do it. So uh, what we'll do, we'll Tom, start to go Tom, on. Go on before I say anything. Uh, one else. more thing. Go one on. more thing. Don't forget, it's a special. It's a special day next. Uh, uh, next uh, Sunday, my good friend. It's uh, it's the fourth July Independence Day. It certainly Woo! is. Yes. So we'll be having a little little American celebration. At celebration. The same time. Yes. 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 So it should be should be a lot of fun for uh, the American um, watchers as well. We'll do a little celebration for that. Yeah. As well. But yes. That'll oh do it. yes. That'll do it for this week. So thank you everybody that's been watching um, once again. And um, yeah, we are going to uh, politely do one. So um, we'll go around the room and get everybody. <laughs> no, we won't. No, we won't because we still got some shout outs to do because <laughs> Ian hasn't done it yet. <laughs> I knew you'd forget about me. Oh well, my goodness! Oh me. You know what? I forgot. <laughs> right. I completely forgot. I'd, last I'd, time. I'd obviously oh like goodness. to thank Jordan first for, <laughs> for persevering with us for the last one hour and forty minutes. Yes. Um, you know, it's one hour and forty minutes of your life you're never going to get back. Um, thanks to, to Tom and Joe for. Um, I beg your pardon. You're meant to promote this, not put everyone down. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> but no, you ain't half yeah, no, wrong. You're um, wrong. You don't get this aside, back. No. You don't get this back at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks to Tom and Joe for allowing me to uh, do your comments again. Uh, a special oh, thanks welcome. to everybody in the comments for all your uh, comments tonight. And uh, Steve Plains is the last one. He says, cheerio. Um, Pillow Pilot, great work, guys. See you next time. Yes. Mike Barnard, one of Joe's mates. Oh, yes. Win. Whoop. Whoosh, guys! That's all. That's one of Joe's Mark. comments. Mm. <laughs> um, a special shout out to my daughter for um, putting that comment in oh, before. Yes. So thanks very much, Tian. Yeah, um, well done. Um, a special thanks as well to Belgium for scoring an absolute picture of a goal just now <laughs> against Portugal. So fantastic! Just seeing that, yes. But um, yeah, it's an absolute page yeah. in it. Yeah, so I can't yeah. believe I forgot about you again. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, no, I, well, I can now. actually. So I can. thanks very much and uh, yeah. good evening. Yeah, no, I, I can sort of believe that I nearly forgot about you because it's not the first time it's happened, and I didn't really want to sort of have that constantly on my on my shoulder. But there you go. Um, so yep. yeah, so yeah, we are now going to say goodbye to everybody, um, and we'll go around the room again. So, Killian Martin, I'm so, not Killian. Um, Jordan, do you want to sort of say goodbye to everybody? Yeah, absolutely. Um, goodbye to absolutely everyone. Have a good rest of your evening. And thank you so much, guys, for having me on again and for everybody listening in. It's been a pleasure. So have a good evening. Fantastic. You're very yeah, welcome, thanks, Jordan. Jordan. It's, been a, it's been an absolute uh, honour and a pleasure uh, chatting with you. You're absolutely, absolutely amazing. <laughs> and keep up keep up the good work. And as I said to you uh, uh, before we finish, uh, best of luck to you uh, in the future uh, of Easy Jess and Dash and... Uh, you never know. You never know. Uh, 
I, I could end up on a on a, on a flight hub <laughs> one day with with that airline. I'd love I'd love to fly with them sometime, you know, because I I I've heard good uh, good <clears throat> uh, feedback uh, for them as well. They're absolutely great airline as well to travel with. So it'd be awesome. To Thank you very there. much. <laughs> no yes. no problem at all. Uh, sure. Right, right, Tom. Yes, Ian. So I don't forget about you again. Um, do you want to say bye to everybody? Yeah, bye everyone. Plain and thanks simple. You too, Ian. Yeah, we'll yeah keep it, nice we'll one. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> we'll keep it nice and simple. Welcome, yes. Yeah, I'll try and keep it short and sweet. Yeah, might as well. <clears throat> yep. Might as well. Um, Joe, um, try and do the same. You want to say goodbye to everybody? <laughs> uh, I want to say goodbye to you, uh, Tom, uh, my good friend, to you, uh, Ian, to you, uh, uh, Jordan, and thanks again, and uh, uh, a very goodbye to. Steve, Stevie Plains and to uh, uh, Killian Martin there as well. Uh, thanks for popping in as well there. Wonderful. At the last minute, he's, he said evening, folks. He said wonderful. Um, yeah. And uh, so. yeah, I will. I will also keep it short and sweet and um, say we'll see you uh, next Sunday, seven p.m. Uh, here on the channel uh, for what will be another wonderful show. So for now, uh, look after yourselves. Continue to stay safe, and uh, we'll we'll do it all again next week. So. Cheerio, everybody. See you later. Bye, 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 bye. Bye. bye.